The open course at Moonar Links is the first ever 18 holes built and prepared for a national championship in Australia. The Peter Thompson design course offers exceptional viewing for spectators and it was a nationwide tour host. Many who played Moonar Links regard it as one of the longest and toughest courses in Australia, for good reason. It was originally a, uh, a cow farm or a, a cow paddock beef farm and Peter Thompson really didn't have to move much soil at all other than maybe flattening greens and laying out some teas and the odd bunkering was put in place but as you can see all the bunkers are almost invisible from certain directions and it's taken advantage of all the natural undulations of the surrounding dunes land or lynx land on the Mornington Peninsula here in Victoria. It measures 6,783 metres from the Black Tees and is a challenge the likes top pros only occasionally experience. Peter Thompson is being quoted as saying that if you're off a handicap of 10, you should give yourself 18 to play this golf course. And off the back marks, he's absolutely right. I play off about 9 or 10, and off the back markers, I'm an 18 or 20 marker. Uh, so it really is a tough course until you learn to manage it. You can't just get up there and blaze away. You have to have a strategy by which to play the golf course. But it's a course that is fair and accessible for all golfers from a range of tee positions. I mean, people say that, yes, it's a tough course, but if you play off the black tees, it is. If you play off the blue tees, it can be, but if you get on the whites, then, then it's not too bad. You know, I love playing off the white tees, because it just, all of a sudden then you, the par fives come into play, and it's a lot more fun. Yeah, a lot of fun awaits as we approach the par three fifth. It depends on which tee you hit off and which way the wind's going. I mean, I've hit three iron in there, I've hit nine iron in there. So it really depends. It's up on top of a hill. The green is sort of a dome. It can run off the front or the back. Uh, so you've got to be precise, really precise there. Local knowledge is all important at the green. Definitely, and they run into the bunkers. That's the thing about this course. If you're on the wrong side, it will run into the bunker. They feed in there. We continue our tour at the tail end of the front nine at hole number eight. If you're playing off the blacks, you have to lay up short of the cross bunkers. They're at about 220, 230. If you're off the blues, you can hit over them. Second shot, same thing. It, everything runs off the front. So uh, if you land it short of middle, it's going to back up and come back off the front. And then you've got the steep embankment to hit up. There's a lot of divots in front of that green <laughs> where guys have hit it fat trying to get it onto the green. There again, it's the Lynx course. You know, you see the old, you know, Lee Trevino. Uh, you know, that gets the putter out, the Texas wedge, and that's what you have to do around here, and you can do it, because it's shaved a lot of the way around the green. It's quite high up, and definitely it runs off the front, so I always go to the back of that green. you just got to be looking at the back. You can get tricked, front pin, you get tricked into going for it, backs up a little bit, bang, it's all the way back down, and then you're thinking, why did I do that? <laughs> you, you've got to go long. Moving on to the signature hole, number 13. It's a beautiful looking hole, to, for starters, off any tee. You've got bunkers are all the way across from the middle to the right hand side, and it just leaves you that little look on the left hand side there of the green, probably a quarter of the green you can see. And then you can run it on from that side. But if you go over the bunkers, then it can run off the back. So it's really inviting. He's inviting you to play a little run up shot there to run it on the left hand side of the green. The very next hole, number 14, is yet another gem. I think all the great courses throughout the world, the first time round, a lot of the times you go, what, where am I here, you know? St Andrews, those courses, what do I do? Then the more you play them, you can pick out spots and you know where to hit, and that's particularly on that 14th hole. When you first get there, if you don't have a member or somebody showing you what to do, uh, it's, quite, it's quite difficult. But once you've been there, you go, oh, the fairway really opens out. If there's a bunker in the middle, I tend to always steer to the right. So there's a house on the hill, I'll aim at that house and try and hit it on there. And everything funnels down. That's the great part about that hole. So you can hit it left or right and it'll funnel down, but if you don't know it, you haven't seen it before, definitely tough. The green on 14 is just as demanding. There again, it's set up quite high. Similar sort of thing to what we just talked about on eight. If you hit it short, it's gonna back off. You can see people all day long hitting it from the front there off the, as it rolls off the green. So there again, you've got to go for the back. One of the best par threes is number 17. That is the ultimate one that's set on the top of the hill. If you're short, it just comes back about 100 metres. And then you can stay there all day trying to get it up and back down. So you've definitely got to get enough club on that hole. Whatever club you think it is, take one, even two extra. Because if, if you hit to the back, you're OK. You know, there's a big hill at the back, but if you're short, you're either in the deep bunker 
or you're going to be spending your time trying to chip up that hill. The green on 17 is massive, but it's not easy. Well, I think when he built the course, Thompson had it in mind for a championship. So a championship to him is a, is a difficult ending, uh, and that's what he's got there. You might think a par three is going to be easy, but not, not this one, no. And stand by for a spectacular final challenge. Standing at the clubhouse, looking down 18, all you can see is just fairway. You don't see any of the bunkers. They're pot bunkers, they're set behind the hills. But when you stood on the tee, you see them all there. They're all in front of you. And there's definitely a big nest of bunkers, uh, about 80 to 100 short of the green, which is what you've got to steer. Either steer your way through, which is easier said than done, or stay short. And the final green provides a great finish. The green feeds to the left, definitely. And you've got to aim the, to the right of the green, knowing that it's going to go down to the left. If you hit in the middle, sometimes it'll run into that left trap. There's a range of high quality accommodation options as well, available on course if you stay at Moonar Links. It's the Peppers Resort. The Mornington Peninsula, renowned as Melbourne's uh, weekend getaway, just uh, an hour and a half away from the airport. Friday and Saturday nights here at the resort are very popular, a number of dining options with in-room dining, the Spike Bar and Terrace, or Pebbles Restaurant with a full a la carte menu. With accommodation, we have 96 rooms and suites made up of one bedroom suites, which are suited to a longer stay or perhaps families with a lounge room, a sofa bed and uh, kitchen facilities. The open suites, which are just along here, there's 36 open suites, all luxury furnishings and fittings with a large bath overlooking the open course. Quite a fabulous type of accommodation and uh, you definitely know you're in a luxury resort when you come to stay in an open room. And for the manager Taffy, Moonar Lynx is the ultimate golfing destination. Why well, I love it, four seasons in one day, golf all year round. During the wet, these courses are totally playable. I think I've only seen play suspended here once, and that was last winter when we had torrential rain. So heavy rain, we can play golf all year round. We've got fantastic grass, good greens, sensational climate, and just one hour's drive from the capital city of Melbourne. The snow is only a couple of hours away. The Mornington Peninsula is almost God's country.